Hi, my name's Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Well, yesterday I was talking about the quartz crystals that I'm looking to put into the uh, supernova reactor, and I explained my rationale behind that, both from natural observed phenomena and also uh, experiments that were done in the 50s and 60s. Now, the actual reaction vessels, which we have here, uh, available to us are made from quartz themselves. Actually, the difference between this is this is crystalline and these are blown amorphous quartz. The reason you choose quartz is because it's able to go up to 1700 degrees plus and uh, that allows uh, the plasma to uh, operate for at least a reasonable amount of time before the containment vessel uh, fails. Now, one of the main reasons I've been holding off on doing these experiments is because these are extremely difficult to produce, uh, and uh, we only have 10, and the one is already in the reactor. Now, the reactor uh, has had a test run done in it, and you can see that uh, on our YouTube channel uh, when it was tested, when it was brought here. And I will use that one that's already in there for testing uh, for controls. Uh, with the various uh, methods of monitoring uh, the reaction. This is our options we have here. So we have uh, 264 diameter, uh, 262 diameter, 160 diameter, then we have 154 diameter, and then three vessels for 53 diameter. Now everything that is in the sort of 50 ranges uh, have a kind of um, a entry port which is uh, I think 10 millimeters on the outside and uh, 8 millimeters on the inside and these are 10 mil the larger ones have a, a, a pipe which is 10 millimeters on the inside and 14 millimeters on the outside so I, I will confirm those later but um, this is one of the main reasons I did not want to just run into this without really thinking about the experiments uh, is that we have a limited amount of glassware to use and so um, obviously the only one where we have <laughs> three or four which are of a similar size are the 53s and the 54 and so um, it might be that we run the carbon in there and then we kind of clean it out as best we can and we know there's only been carbon in there and then we add say into this one the carbon and the potassium carbonate uh, and run that and then add the carbon potassium carbonate and uh, boron oxide uh, and so forth so we can get the most out of uh, one of these particular vessels as long as long as they survive and so you know um you might think of other things that we would want to put in there, but this is our limitation, and we don't know whether a particular uh, plasma ball will burn its way through a, a, a tube or, or cause it to shatter. And so uh, we need to be really careful about our planning, about you know how we are going to go about this. And already people have suggested uh, other things to add into uh, the mix, and obviously these this carbon will have some uh, uh, normal water from the atmosphere absorbed into it. And uh, so will the uh, potassium carbonate have some normal water in there. And so Alan Smith, uh, he suggested maybe uh, um, drying this out. And uh, there was a suggestion to use deuterium oxide, and we have some here, deuterium oxide. Uh, and so basically... Uh, make this hydrous but with uh, deuterium oxide instead of uh, H2O and uh, maybe run experiments like that and we also have a number of other reagents like for instance lithium carbonate so in this case it would be um, uh, taking the potassium out of the mix and, and adding uh, uh, lithium in there so uh, perhaps you can get your thinking caps on and think about what is the best kind of overall protocol or sort of what what goes in where at what point and I think we're going to kind of have to play by ear uh, so the one that's in the reactor we can do a number of tests to see if uh, 
uh, it fails rather easily. Uh, we also have to be careful we don't burn out the magnetron, um, and so uh, that's why it's important to keep it cold. And uh, there's some other things I want to talk about in this little video to get your thinking caps on. Uh, so the first is the x-rays, these are uh, uh, disposable x-rays here. And um, I uh, have, this is the developer in here, and this is the x-ray. So these will be taped to the outside of the reactor. Um, and the idea is that uh, uh, we guide the, uh, uh, the strange radiation that may or may not come uh, to these x-rays uh, using uh, strong neodymium magnets, as I did uh, when I was uh, testing the echo fuel in 2017. Uh, what I will say is that uh, Shishkin's team at Dubna Science City, they've actually observed uh, these little birdies, these evidence of strange radiation, worryingly just coming out of a microwave in normal operation. And so we will do a, tri uh, a control where we have these uh, also on the reactor, but we're not actually running any particular experiment in there, just running the magnetron and see if we observe any uh, birdies or uh, marks on these. And we, we don't only have these sort of uh, circular uh, 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 magnets, we also have these little cubes. So we can put a whole bunch of these cubes over and see if we can... Uh, uh, draw some of these uh, dark evos or white evos if it's looking down the barrel of the gun as it were uh, towards the x-ray with and without uh, re uh, an experiment going on so uh, get your thinking caps on for that's that's one control uh, inside an experiment and outside of an experiment um, I'm sure you'll think of many other controls so that's basically what I wanted to say in that is this video. We have a limited amount of glassware. Uh, one thing I was considering, uh, which might be quite interesting, and I do have uh, some MagnaView so I can see where, what the fields are like on this, but it was, it was maybe to uh, strap some of these, some of these, um, onto the reaction vessels like this. So kind of like maybe hold them on there because uh, it's an aluminium chamber, and if, if I get all the fields to point towards the center, or I, I have a number of them so they're kind of like it in a kind of like to create a field confinement, maybe we can have a scenario where we can keep the plasma in the center. Uh, I don't know. I think this is something that I'd like to try, you know, when we've got all the big wish list of experiments that we want to do. And remember, when you see the next video... You will see the cost of the the actual testing of the uh, material on the beam line, and that is quite pricey. So really need to think, you know, all of that has to be paid for at some point. And so we can't just go um, <laughs> and produce lots and lots and lots of samples. However, we do have a very large number of uh, sample. Uh, there's a whole bag full of here, and there's a whole load of sample containers here. Uh, we have a large amount of the carbon, um, and uh, we also have a uh, an ability to make nearly as much as we want. Now, someone else asked about um, uh, the controller, and uh, I'm going to talk in, in, in another video uh, about some controls with the, the beta monitoring. But uh, the controller itself has a uh, an ability to uh, have this little signal generator go in here and modulate the power, uh, kind of like turning it on and off and so on. So we could try uh, that, but I, I, I really want to do the basic experiments first and uh, see if there are any indications of uh, elemental shifts, um, and particularly this uh, isotopic shift that I'm going to be discussing in the next video. So thank you very much for your time, and I will see you later today.